is a really hard video for me to film. I've already tried filming it twice and deleted it because every time I try, it comes out preachy and that is not what I'm intending to do. But I'm just gonna warn you now, take it with a grain of salt. I don't mean to come out off as being preachy and this is, and holier than thou and this is how you should do things, but for some reason that's how it's coming out. So please know the intention is not that. I'm, my intention is really just to give you some advice from my point of view and and hopefully those of you that are choosing to be stay-at-home moms can take some of this and help you on your journey or you can say forget it she's insane and doesn't know what she's talking about but it's this is my life so this is the only perspective I have okay so if you haven't read the title sorry um stay-at-home mom being a stay-at-home mom my perspective on being a stay-at-home mom I haven't given this a name yet um, I guess I'll know when you'll know when it's up there um, I have been asked this a lot over the last four years on YouTube. This is my four year anniversary this month on YouTube. Um, what it's like being a stay at home mom and do I like it and how do I make friends and or how did I make friends and then how did I not go nuts um, mentally being at home with people that don't talk in full sentences. Don't speak in full sentences. I mean, they do now, but anyway. Um, so I'm gonna try to give you some tips and some personal anecdotes, and this may go on for a very long time, and I'm sorry, but it's 16 years of experience that I'm trying to boil down into about 15 minutes. So, okay, standard disclaimer. I know that some of you are going to be offended for some reason, it shouldn't be taken that way, but, um, People feel very strongly about the concept of either working or staying at home when you have children. And, you know, I don't see men getting into this debate. This is a woman thing. We need to just support each other. It's the choice that my husband and I made for our family. I think it's the best one for our family. It might not be the best one for yours. I'm not going to judge you, so don't judge me. I don't even know you. Like, I'm not talking to a person. I'm talking to a camera. So I can't be directing this at a specific person. So don't... Please don't take offense at this. This is my choice and um, my husband's choice. And you know, if, if this isn't something you want to do with your life, then don't do it. It's that's okay. Um, that's what's so great about this world is we all have our own paths to choose. So I'm just giving you my perspective. Okay. Also, I guess there's one more thing I should address. Yes, I am aware that I'm very lucky that my husband and I have uh, are in a situation where I can choose not to work, not to well. I still work, where I choose can choose not to have an income um, and be home with and for our kids and my husband, frankly. So um, I get that. I'm aware of it. I am um, highly aware of that. The first thing I want to talk about is how to make friends when you're a stay-at-home mom because it is different than when you're in the workforce. I feel really strongly that if you're in a financial position where you don't have to work, then you need to pay it forward. And for me, that is volunteering. And I have been, I laughingly say, a professional volunteer pretty much since, oh gosh, I don't know, my entire adult life. It started, um, I mean, even when I was in a sorority, part of being in a sorority is philanthropy. So, um, and all through high school, I always volunteered weekly in a social services group at a Rehabilitation Center for Children with um, Mental and Physical, I don't know what you call it now, Handicaps, I guess, um, Disabilities. Back then, it, they just, it was a different word. Um, anyway, so it's always been a part of my life, and even before I chose to stay home, when um, I was still working here in San Antonio, my husband was in the Air Force, and so I joined the Officers Wives Club which is a volunteer group, and other than the social activities, which was a huge way for us to make friends, both my husband and I being new to the city, um, there is a philanthropic side to that as well. Um, and one of the things that I chose to do once I was in that club was to try to get as involved as I could, and I took a board position and I was the newsletter editor, so that was a way for me to be intellectually stimulated and interact with other people on a different level than just talking about our kids. So that's how it started. And just a real brief resume of all the other, not all, but some of the highlights. Um, then I became involved in our synagogue and our sisterhood group. I think churches probably have a similar, I'm not entirely familiar on, on church structure, but I think most churches have some sort of women's group or sisterhood group and I joined the board um, for that and met a lot of other women my age. Um, 
I organized what we call Cradle Roll, which was basically a playgroup um, for other mothers of our synagogue, and we would organize playdates on a monthly basis. And uh, you know, I would get to go to monthly board meetings and talk about not just my interest of the playgroup stuff, but you know, board business. And that was another way for me to at least once a month well, you know, at the meetings at least, have a more intellectual discussion and be around other grown-ups without the kids. There were babysitters um, for that, so that was nice. And then as the kids got older and into their um, preschool and school life, uh, the main focus of my volunteer activities was the PTO and then the PTA of our public and uh, uh, elementary school and middle school. And that um, is a fabulous, PTA especially, is a fabulous, fabulous organization that is run almost entirely by women, just by circumstance, I think, and do so many amazing things for our kids. And even if your only involvement is sending in your dues every year and you never do anything else, that's great. Um, there's a political side to it. They do a lot of lobbying on behalf of our kids, everybody's kids. Um, they were a huge catalyst behind the seatbelt movement. Anyway. Um, there's so many amazing opportunities for volunteering at your children's schools, and there is um, a way for you to use your talent, whatever your background is. Um, if you're into land gardening, landscape architect, what have you, there's the school grounds and gardening and chances to educate, opportunities to educate the kids that way. If you're into graphic design, obviously there's the newsletter, they're setting up displays and bulletin boards in the um, schools. I know this doesn't sound maybe as stimulating as some of the stuff you did in your career, but I think you'll find that when it's directed for your child and other people's children, it's really rewarding. And it it really, I think, makes a huge impact on your child's um, involvement in their school. When they see their parents think it's a big deal to be part of the school, then they are invested in wanting to be part of their school. And generally speaking, children whose parents are involved in their school are much more successful academically than those that are not. Period. Regardless of the parents' educational background. Just something to put out there. So um, that's how I met most of my friends, was getting really involved at the kids' schools. Um, even before they joined a preschool, there was a mom's club. Now there's Mothers of Preschoolers, that's a Christian organization that um, is huge and from what I hear really great if that's your um, religious bent. Um, obviously that was not going to work for me, I am not Christian. But so I joined a non-denominational group called Mom's Club, I think it's also a national organization. I joined the local chapter um, near where I lived at the time, um, met a lot of people through there. And then um, not only did I meet other people, but there were opportunities from like, you know, play date type things so my child could meet. I mean, they're not making lifelong friends at six months, but um, you know, they would put us in play groups based on our kids' ages. So you could meet other moms with kids in your age, your kid's age range. And I am still friends with um, women that I met way back then. So that's a big way to get involved. Now, um, as my kids are older, I'm not, I mean, I'm still a member of PTA, but I, I don't, I'm not a board member anymore. Kind of grew out of that. And um, my main um, volunteer involvement now is I'm a board member of our homeowners association. I live in a gated community, and so um, it's a private community. So we govern, like we manage. It's hard to explain, um, and it's too long. It'll be too long. But basically, the streets and everybody pays dues to live here, and you have to figure out how to spend all the funds and and make sure everything's running, like the pool and the. You wouldn't believe the yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, that is a almost daily activity. Lots of emails, monthly meetings, phone calls, etc. And I am also on our synagogue's education committee, so um, that's a good way for me to take my um, education background and use it not so much to help my kids. My kids are pretty much at the tail end of their religious educational experience, but help focus that towards um, just the future generations. And so that has been fulfilling, and I'm meeting a whole different group of people that way because the people that are on that committee are from all different backgrounds and um, ages, and, and so that's been really neat. Um, so yeah, volunteer. Volunteering is, a, you know, you've now got the time and you don't need a babysitter to do it. Find activities that um, fit your schedule and fit your childcare 
I always had a babysitter one day, not always, I'd say once the, they were about six months old. I found a college age or graduate school um, student who is willing to come for four hours once a week in the middle of the day so that I could get out and do something without my child. You need that time. You, you know, it's, it, you need that time. Even if it's an hour once a week, something where there's not somebody literally attached to you physically and, um, and get out. And for me, that was, sometimes it was nothing more than going and sitting at the bookstore and having a cup of coffee or walking around the mall, buying nothing because I didn't have enough money to pay a babysitter and go shopping, but at least just walking around and, and just getting some fresh air. Sometimes it was meeting a friend for lunch or coffee. Coffee's cheaper. Um, sometimes it was getting my hair colored because, come on now, priorities, that I never gave up, or getting my nails done. Just anything to just decompress a little bit. So um, I think that I've pretty much covered how I make... Now, also, I have to add one more way of how you make friends. Once your kids become involved in things, extracurricular activities, whether it's sports or... For my life is sport. I have two boys. It was sports. It was always sports. You meet a lot of people that way. Um, our kids played baseball and football for a little while at the our local YMCA. And our very first baseball team that we signed our oldest son up for was just random. Like we didn't request a coach. We didn't know anybody. And it was 11 families that nobody knew each other. And we're still friends with all of them pretty much. Um, we still stay in touch. So that was one way we met a lot of um, our friends and as our kids get older and we're more involved in their extracurricular activities like for my kids It's football. I've met a lot of moms, you know of other football players We sit in the stands every week so you get to know each other. Um, that is a huge way I know that if you have a two-month-old Elementary school seems like an eternity from now. How are you gonna make friends? Like I said, there's moms clubs. There's gymbery classes. There's what have you so I think I've covered how to make friends and kind of how to stay intellectually stimulated. The volunteering part is huge. Okay, now, just the stay-at-home mom part, it is a job. It's a job, it's a profession. Um, it's a profession you get no training for. You are literally just one day, you are a professional, you could be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a hairdresser, and then the next day, you are a mom. Like, there's no um, transition period. So, um, some advice. On, on how to handle that. And I'm gonna say, for me, it's still a work in progress, so I don't always practice what I preach. I'm not perfect. But I'm most successful at it when I look at it as a job, which means you get up at a certain time every day, you get dressed. Um, there are days I don't. I mean, come on. There is an advantage to staying at home, and sometimes that means if I wanna be in my pajamas all day long once in a while, and I do it. But, um, for the most part, you get up, get dressed, have a schedule, and approach it like this is a job. So, you know, housework, put it on a schedule. Um, doing the dishes, put it on a schedule. I have a very, I will say, traditional marriage. My husband goes to work every day. He deals with all that stuff. I stay at home. Everything that happens pretty much under my roof and for the most part, even outside the house. Um, in the yard is my domain. So we have a very divide and conquer approach. Um, it's very 1950s. I know some people don't like that. My husband doesn't really do much around the house. He works 16 hour days. I respect that and I can't do that, not the way he does it, so I handle everything in here. Do I get help now? Yes. Um, I do have um, last, it's a year, year and a half, I now have a cleaning crew that comes once a week and does kind of like a, I don't know, they come in like a tornado and they do all the surface cleaning and vacuuming and stuff. I'm still in charge of all the laundry and the cooking and all that, but yeah, that's a huge help, but, um, so I'm not going to say it's not, but, um, even before that, I did all the house cleaning myself. That's my job. I'm a housewife. Like, you know. Now. It's don't beat yourself up if you need some help, if you need help with childcare, if you need help with housekeeping, if you need help with whatever it is, the tedious side of being a, a housewife. Your husband has help at his job. He has someone who, I mean, I don't know what, if they have an office job, let's just say. They have someone who answers their phones or, you know, a secretary or a receptionist. So why can't you, you know, IT department and all that stuff. So why can't, you can have help too. It's, if you can afford it, um, 
get the help. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not like your husband works by himself and does everything on his own. So why should you? So it does help me in my mindset when I think of being a stay-at-home mom as a job. It's every year it's different. As your kids get older, things change. So it's not like a static thing where every year it's the same thing and the same boring, it's, you know, it's not like that. Your kids change, you change, your marriage changes. It's all, it's fun to watch how your life is sort of evolving over it. Um, the focus of my life 10 years ago is very different um, from where I am now and I've enjoyed that. The thing I joke about though with my husband is that um, I, as a stay-at-home mom or a housewife or whatever you want to call it, I don't ever get a vacation. Um, we may go on vacation as a family. I get a change of scenery, they get a vacation. Y'all know what I mean. We you know, our husbands go to work from, you know, whatever, seven to eight, seven to seven and our six, whatever. They're gone for a certain period of time, traditionally nine to five. They come home, they put the briefcase down, they're done. We're never done. Like you never stop being a mom. Um, that's sometimes a hard concept to get your head around. And there are times when I'm like, and that's okay. You're not supposed to be like butterflies and sunshine and rainbows every day. There, there's no job in the world where you go to work every day and you just love your job, no matter what your job is. So why should it be any different being a stay-at-home mom? There are going to be days you're like, oh my god, I hate, I hate this, and that's okay. Um, and I think that's where women really beat themselves up when they start not liking that part of their life. It's okay. You could be working back at your real job before you were a mom and there are days when you probably hated your job or hated that day or just liked a part of it. You may even like your boss or a coworker. Well, it's no different when you're a stay-at-home mom. There are days. Um, I would say if there are more days where you feel like that than less, then you need to sit down and take stock and see what you can do to change that because if mom's unhappy, everybody is unhappy. Well, I think that this, at least I opened the door to a conversation. Um, I know it's kind of all over the place. I've really enjoyed the last 16 years of my life. I will admit that I'm slightly concerned about um, five years from now when nobody's home. Like, what do I do? Um, that's another phase of my life. Obviously, this YouTube and blogging thing has... Um, really taken up a lot of my time. I, I can say that I am a working mom whose schedule is pretty flexible, so I'm home for my kids and, and all that, but a lot of my day is spent working. Um, and so maybe as once the kids are completely out of the house, that's a phase of my life that I'll make into a real, you know, full-time thing. I don't know, but I'm not going to worry about five years from now. I know that sounds a little naive. I am, I am enjoying the last few years that my kids are at home, and I'm sure other things will come my way. Um, I'd like to volunteer even more. I'd like to travel with my husband a little bit and um, focus even more on the YouTube and blogging and vlogging things. So I am interested to hear input, constructive conversations here. Um, one of the main positives about YouTube is it is a community that where we can support each other, bounce ideas off of each other, and um, hopefully not be ugly about it. So I'm not going to say that I have all the answers, but um, if you have questions or want to know how I handle a specific situation, please feel free to ask me. I can only you know give you the advice that I've from my life experience, so it's somewhat limited. But I hope this was a little bit helpful. Um, this is a little off the beaten path for me. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in Wednesday's vlog video. So until then, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.